Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at the 2017 Subaru Outback. This is a limited 2.5 liter four cylinder and I have to tell you I'm pretty excited to test drive it because I've driven this vehicle before with the six cylinder in it and it was a pretty nice vehicle but it was a little bit thirsty so I'm really curious to find out how much better fuel economy that you can get with this 2.5 liter four cylinder and is it just as livable when it comes to power for everyday driving? The Outback, as we know, it was redesigned for the 2015 model year. Therefore, there's not a lot new to talk about here in terms of styling, but there are a few features I want to point out. The obvious is the fact that we're in an Outback here, so we've got the lower cladding down here in the skid plate treatment visually that give it a more off-roady look. But when it comes to functionality, this actually has active grill shutters here behind this grill. You can't see them, but what they do is they shut at higher speeds to make the car more aerodynamic, and that helps a lot with the fuel economy, something very popular with a lot of cars out there right now. This one also has steering responsive fog lights. They turn with you when you turn. So in fog, theoretically, you get a little bit better visibility. Now, I don't have fog here in the desert ever, so we're just going to have to take Subaru's word for it. As we come around the side here, I want to point out the fact that we've got 18-inch alloy wheels here on the limited trim grade. It's nice that they haven't gone larger like a lot of crossovers and SUVs have because that still gives you a nice tall sidewall for a better ride when you're out actually going off-road. It, it's just something that we've seen with a lot of crossovers. You get 19, 20, even 22-inch wheels. You really can't take them off-road for a comfortable ride. It just sort of, uh, it's made for the street. Now this does have a few visual things here. We've got this roof rack up here that gives it about a three to four inch taller look in silhouette. When in reality, that roof really ends here. It's a nice look, but it's also very functional because it's a real roof rack that you can actually strap a lot of accessories to. Better still, here when you open the door, both front and back, the sills are very wide. They've got steps on them. So you can actually get up here and access whatever you've got on the roof quite easily and quite comfortably. Very well done. Out back here on the uh, Outback, it's a pretty familiar look just like up front. You've got the built-in spoiler here with the third row brake light up there. And just like from the side view, those roof rails up there really do give this a more bulky SUV look, even though it is just a wagon. Lower fascia down here, you've got the rugged black plastic look. And this one here actually has the power lift gate here. Now you can open this in a number of ways. You've got a button inside. There's a button right here on the bottom of it for closing it and you've got the key fob. Now it doesn't have the motion activation like some vehicles do, but what it does have is a height adjustment. You can adjust the height at which it stops, so when you go to press that button to shut it, if you're a shorter person, you don't have to reach up so high, or if you're taller, you can adjust it to open all the way so that you don't bump your head on it all the time. That's a pretty nice feature, I think. The interior of the Outback is very much like a sedan or a car because well, that's what this is. It's not really a true SUV that's really large and tall. This is a car that's lifted up, so it feels like you're sitting in a car, but the seat does have enough adjustment range where you can lift it up and give yourself that SUV-like lookout because you do have a little bit of extra height with the suspension height that's here, so you still get that SUV-ness as far as the commanding view, but as far as sitting here, it feels like a car. And what they've done with the design is very tasteful, I think. I like the dark black in here. This comes with lighter colors, but the dark black with this sort of a satin finish wood grain really looks good. It is faux wood, but it's very well done faux wood. And the quality of the materials in here is very good, I think. It's really sort of mid-grade. It's not the kind of stuff you're going to find in Audi, but it doesn't have a lot of cheap chintzy things that you find in some of the mid-grade competitors out there. This does have everything that you can get with a few exceptions. The new Touring model does offer a little bit more trim inside, soft trim on the doors. The steering wheel is leather wrapped, and on the steering wheel are a lot of controls. You've got infotainment controls, you've got driver safety assistance controls, as well as paddle shifters here. Paddle shifters for the continuously variable transmission. And they actually feel of reasonable quality. They're not made of metal, but they're not cheap chintzy plastic like you do find in some of the competitors. It is tilt and telescoping, but it's manually adjustable. Now these seats, this is a 10-way power seat in the Limited. Over here you have a four-way power seat for the passenger. Very comfortable. They're firm seats and they're very supportive, but not so firm that they're hard. 
they really have a nice support level, especially from side to side. And I'm about 170 pounds, and there's plenty of room here where I could be a bigger person and still find lots of comfort. The center stack is very simply laid out. You've got the infotainment system up here, and then you've got HVAC down below it. Down here, you've got a really nice area for your phone. A big phone can fit in there, and you've got the auxiliary and USB ports in addition to a 12-volt port down there, so there's a lot of room for devices. You've got really nice cup holders here, and down here, just behind the shifter, are the controls for the hill descent control, as well as the X-Mode all-wheel drive. Sitting back here in the back seat, like I was saying up front, very much like sitting in a sedan or a car because that's what this is based on. Legroom, as you can see, very, very good. These seats about halfway forward, halfway back. Got plenty of room here. Headroom pretty good too, even though there's a sunroof that sometimes does take up a little bit of space. Now there are some good amenities back here. We are in the limited, so there's vents back here for HVAC. There's heated seats. That's always a nice thing. One thing I'm surprised I don't see back here, there's no power ports or USB ports just yet. I, I assume Subaru's probably going to add that at some point. There is a center fold down armrest here that does have cup holders in it, and these seat backs do adjust for rake, so that's nice. Now this doesn't slide, not so necessary here because we don't have a third row. Now the cool thing is, these seats of course, as you'd expect, do fold down in a 60-40 split. There's levers back there that you can pull that actually allows you to lay those down. Now the cargo area back here, very large because this isn't a crossover SUV that's a little bit shorter. It's a full length wagon, so you've got a nice big deck back there that allows you to put some pretty big things in there without even folding these seats down. But once you do, you've even got a larger area with a reasonably flat load floor. Now underneath that, there's a spare tire as well. Always a good thing with a crossover or an SUV. Anything that's marketed to us is something to take out into the wild because a lot of cars now have that can of fix a flat and an inflator that isn't going to help you if you cut a tire open on a rock. I'm very happy with this interior. It's very tastefully done. The materials are of a high quality, as is the switch gear. Good storage and comfort. And I just like the fact that they've kept it down to business. They didn't try to over-dazzle me here with a lot of different finishes and colors and textures. It's just very simple. Therefore, I give the interior five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is a pretty good system. I've liked it before in the other Subarus I've driven. It's actually very similar, if not identical, in fact, it is identical to a same system you're going to find in some of the Toyota models out there because the two companies are a little bit related. It works very well. It is a capacitive touchscreen, which means it's not a soft touchscreen that you can really feel a little bit of softness to. It's actually a hard plastic and it works very well. The menus are easy to understand. The graphics are pretty bright and visible. The only time they're not is sometimes in sunlight because it's not shielded. You do get a little bit of glare there. Now, audio, Harman Kardon system. This is the upper level system here. Sounds very, very good. Navigation, easy to program and use on the go. Now, the only thing I will say is we don't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto here. Not a big deal to everybody, but I do use that as my measurements. Infotainment gets four out of five stars. What's under the hood here is something that sets Subaru apart from virtually every other automaker known to man, except for Porsche, and that is the Boxer engine horizontally opposed four-cylinder. This one, 2.5 liters with 175 horsepower and 174 pound-feet of torque. Here, made it to a continuously variable transmission, or CVT. It's rated here at 25 MPG city, 32 MPG highway, and 28 MPG combined. And a big crossover. So I always ask the question, how does it go? Well, it's a four-cylinder engine in a pretty big car, so we're not talking sports car territory here when it comes to power delivery, but it's very refined for being a four-cylinder that's working pretty hard, I think, and this continuously variable transmission actually has some nice features to it. It has a manual mode here, which allows you sort of get the feeling that you're, well, in a real transmission and it gives you shift points that you can use these paddle shifters for, which is pretty neat. Not all CVTs give you that, and it actually works pretty convincingly. Look at that. Now, it does still sort of act a little strange for a regular transmission. You can still tell you've got a CVT here, but if you're out on a back road, you want to sort of have a little bit of fun, it's going to let you do it. Or even more important, if you're off-roading and you want to make sure you can be in the right gear ratio for what you're doing, you can have that control. 
So I'm pretty pleased with this. And that doesn't come out of my mouth very often for anything with a continuously variable transmission. Fuel economy is really what I was curious about with this because it's rated at 28 mpg combined. That's for an all-wheel drive crossover SUV-ish type vehicle. That's, that's pretty good. Now yes, you do trade off a little bit with horsepower, but let's be honest, the flat six really doesn't have that much more horsepower. It's around 250, 256. Not competitive at all for a six cylinder engine. So my argument before was, why not look at the four cylinder? At least you get the fuel economy. Well, fuel economy is what I got here. It's rated at 28 MPG. I got 29 during my week with it. 29 and a half to be exact, but I usually round it down, 29 MPG. That's pretty good for an overall average with the air conditioner on at all times, because of course it's still summer here in Arizona. So I'm very impressed with this powertrain. It gets five out of five stars. On the topic of handling, this rides and drives very much like the car it's based on. It's got a nice, quiet, stable, solid ride. It's sprung pretty stiffly, I'd say, but not so stiff that it rides rough, which means it's pretty sharp when it comes to throwing it into a curve. Fully independent front suspension, fully independent rear suspension, no twist beams or anything like that. And when they redesigned this car in 2015, they did a lot of quiet tuning that actually pays off for road noise insulated front windshield, a lot of sound deadening, and the wind noise is pretty low too. Putting it into a curve works pretty well. Even though it does have electric power steering, it's still pretty sharp in overall feel. So Subaru always tells us that the Outback is a crossover SUV. It has the capability and the off-road traction to really go pretty much all the places you can take full-blown SUVs, right? So we're gonna do something right here my mogul test. What this is, it's a mogul here where I get one front wheel off the ground and one of the rear wheels either off the ground or with very little traction. It's a test that not all SUVs that are really good at four-wheel driving and off-roading, they can't all achieve this, especially most of the crossover mid-size SUVs that this competes against. But this has the X mode here, which really dials up the symmetrical all-wheel drive system for maximum traction articulation. It can torque vector to single wheels as you go. So this is a good way to see how that really works. Now I've also got the hill start assist and the hill descent control on, which should keep us from rolling back downhill when I take my foot off the throttle. So here we go. I'm just gonna drive up here nice and slow, get into position here. My front wheel's dipping down. All right, all right, so right now my front wheel over there is up in the air. You can see this kind of teeter-tottering here. My rear wheel back here, very little traction. So in a lot of vehicles, we'd be stuck. So I'm just gonna lay on the throttle nice and easy. Look at that, child's play for this thing. Good deal. The mogul test was fun. Now, this is really the big leveler when it comes to any crossover or off-road vehicle, and that is the desert washboard road, because out here at speed, it doesn't matter whether it's a Range Rover or a Wrangler. This surface out here, even though it isn't really rough off-roading, can make some of the best off-road vehicles feel like a pile. And so what I'm finding out here is that this car is freaking amazing out here. I'm not getting any rattling or shuddering in the structure, no rattling in the suspension of the steering. I'm getting a little bit of dash and trim rattle when I really hit the rough stuff, but this thing's holding together as solid as you'd expect most big SUVs and crossovers to. It's just downright fun out here. You can just blow and go out here like you could in a Jeep Wrangler almost. Amazing. Anyway, now that I've just kind of gotten excited there, I really have to say I'm amazed and impressed with this chassis overall. It's very versatile. It has a lot of talents. And for the price that this thing sells for, it's hard to argue with. Therefore, chassis gets five out of five stars. One thing I want to point out is this car has the Subaru EyeSight driver assistance system has a lot of different features, way too many to list here, but one of them 
is lane departure warning. And I've demonstrated this before. And basically, if you let your car veer out of your lane over the line, it lets you know. Now, in the last test drive of this car two years ago, I sort of complained a little bit because the system defaults to on every time you start the car. Therefore, if you don't like it, if you don't want the electronic mother-in-law in the back seat tapping on the shoulder and complaining about your driving, you have to remember to turn it off every single time you get in the car, which I wouldn't buy a car because of that. But Subaru must have listened to either me or all the customers out there because now you can actually defeat the system 100% of the time. Isn't that great? So, I mean, if you love the safety systems, awesome, awesome, awesome. But if you don't, you can turn it off. When it comes to the measure of quality, as you can tell, I was pretty impressed with this car overall. It's got a solid structure, rattle-free, good materials inside and out, and the body fit and finish on the outside is exceptional. You'd never know this car was built in Indiana. It's got Japanese quality everywhere you look, touch, and feel. Very good. It gets five out of five stars for our quality measure. Now on safety, even though I don't score it, I do want to point out that this is an IIHS top safety pick plus. Subaru really has become almost the Volvo of, well, reasonably priced cars when it comes to safety. They've made it a big part of their brand. This car, obviously, it gets good on all the crash tests, plus it has a superior level of crash protection systems available. All right, my good friends, wrapping it up for the 2017 Subaru Outback Limited. I have to say I'm very impressed, very, very impressed. I like the packaging, I like the off-road capability, and I really like the fact that you've got all the SUV capability inside, but it still handles like a car. You don't have that top-heavy SUV drama that goes along with going all the way up into that realm. And the thing is here, I started out this review by saying I was really curious about the four-cylinder, was it good to live with compared to the six? And I gotta tell you, if I were spending my own money on this car, I'd buy the four because the power isn't that much less. And as you can see, the fuel economy is downright amazing for a vehicle with this kind of capability. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'd spend my own money on this car. It goes on our I buy it list for 2016. So it's the first Subaru ever to go on our I buy it list, but it's also the first car with a CVT ever to get there. I don't know what's happening to me, it's just, I'm a little bit smitten with this car. It really is a great package. Now, pricing on this one, $35,000 and some change. You can get into this thing for well less than $30,000 if you don't go with a limited and all the options, and you still get the same driving experience and the same capability off-road. So I really think that's a great deal. So value, I put it five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at five stars for the review, man. Very good. I'm Sam Hamar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. A little personal story here. Just recently, in fact, I was test driving a new car at a media launch and I had a journalist friend with me. And I was talking about what we talked about earlier in the video about these systems that default to on when they come to the electronic nannies and how they drive me absolutely bonkers. It's just a pet peeve of mine, you know? I like to be able to turn these systems off and leave them off and not have to turn them off every time I get in the car. And so I was telling him about this and he looks at me and he says, well, maybe it's just because you're a bad driver. I'm looking at you, you know who I'm talking about. You know I'm talking about you out there. Well, look, I'm a very good driver. I just sometimes look at these lines as suggestive guides but I've never put a car off the racetrack at 140 miles an hour. I'll give you that. Anyway, if you like the test drive you just saw, click on the link right here and subscribe to your YouTube channel because I test drive one or two cars a week and we have a new video almost every other day. There's always something new, so stay tuned.